hello everyone in this session we will discuss about the next topic is vn inverted v curves vn inverted v curves here before discussing the vn inverted v curves just we have a small discussion on this here so generally in the previous analysis we will understand some points those are those are like this in the previous discussion under load condition we are getting one thing that is ia cos pi is the constant is constant so from this we can get some information that is armature current is inversely proportional to the power factor or we can call it as the power factor so here the armature current is there ia is proportional to 1 by cos phi so 1 by power factor generally we have some relation that is power factor is proportional to the active power it is inversely proportional to the reactive power so you know the formula simply the active power equal via cos pi the reactive power equal via sin pi so by that we can get cos pi sin phi both are in opposite manner so that's why this is like this so by using that phenomena we can give some curves some curves that is so here we will take the two terms this is the zero this is the field current in the x-axis it is the field currents y-axis we have the two terms one term is the armature current the another term is the power factor armature current as well as power factor how we are writing here here the relation is armature current and power factor both are inversely proportional inversely proportional so we are at inch in at zero zero at zero means the field current is zero we are we are increasing the current means the excitation is increased at this point it will reach the normal excitation so this area this point is called the normal excitation so this region is called under excitation under excitation that means in this region q will be absorbed by the machine q will be absorbed by the machine so that's why the machine whenever the machine is absorbs it will be act as leading power factor for the alternator it will be act as the leading power factor at, at this point at this normal excitation the reactive power zero it nor delivered or neither neither delivered nor absorbed then at this area it will be acting at the unity power factor unity power factor after that so in this condition what happened the power factor value also increases so this region is the this curve is the power factor it will be reach the power factor maximum at normal excitation so after that it is increases again field current increases the machine will be acting as the over excited that means it has the more flux than the normal excitation at this region the reactive power is delivered because it has the more and more power so whenever it will be delivering the reactive power then it will be acting at the lagging power factor it will be acting at the lagging power factor so this term is then again the power factor value slowly decreases slowly decreases so this is called this relation gives the power factor and this relation gives the armature current this relation gives the armature current okay right because both power factor and armature current will be opposite direction when the mechanical the condition is fixed that condition is mechanical power is constant and field current is varied field current is varied 
at this phenomena it only works it only works okay so here just look at here this v curve this is in v shape the curve between armature current and the field excitation is known as the v curve and next the power factor and the field excitation is known as the inverted v curve so that's why according to these shapes the curves will be called as v curves and the inverted v curves v curves and the inverted v curves okay right so uh, this when it is under excited condition means the alternator q reactive power is absorbed and it will be acting as the leading power factor when it will be over excited the reactive power is delivered and it will be acting at the lagging power factor okay next so this is about the phenomena so we will give some conclusion here the conclusion is generally the alternators are on bus bar over excited so any alternator just keep in your mind it should be over excited alternator because most of the loads are inductive loads what is the reason here all the loads are inductive loads yes the, they absorb the reactive power so inductive loads of importance is nothing but that will try to take the reactive power which is supposed to delivered by the over excited alternator so 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 this is the alternator and this is the load always loads are inductive loads always loads are the inductive loads so so it should be it should be over excited it should be whenever it is over excited more feed current that more field current more reactive power is supplied to the inductive loads more reactive power is supplied to the load okay right so we have some advantages with this over excited machines we will look at here with over excited stability is improved for stable parallel operation so in order to become stability will be improved okay and stability is improved and by that stability we can get the stable parallel operation will be done here stable parallel operation also done by the here here we know that how how it is happen means in the last discussion we are getting some e sin del will be constant here e is proportional to 1 by sin del it is proportional to 1 by del okay here the excitation is inversely proportional to load angle excitation is inversely proportional to load angle so that's why this should be useful this is also very very important thing the excitation is inversely proportional to sin del and is proportional to del okay yeah <clears throat> so by these two points we can understand the importance of the thing the most important thing is always alternator try to bet in over excited and by this over excitation not only supplying the reactive power but also stability will be improved stability will be improved next we have some M mcqs then by discussion of the mcqs we will get the some knowledge about that first an alternator operating on infinity bus bar at leading power factor so we have the alternator it will be acting bus bar at leading power factor leading means q absorbed q should be absorbed mechanical input is fixed so mechanical input is the fixed constant okay if the excitation is increased then the power factor the armature current load angle reactive power and active power we should find out then the power factor is in the power factor is improved because it is in leading power factor in the leading means so generally power factor is like this <coughs> this is the leading position this is the lagging position it increased means increases and what about the armature current 
power factor and r major current both are in opposite sign so r major current will be decreased what about load angle what about load angle load angle is decreases why decreases you know that excitation emf inversely proportional to load angle here excitation emf is increases then automatically load angle is decreases next what about reactive power reactive power here reactive power position is absorption it is absorbing leading in the leading means reactive power is absorbed leading means reactive power is absorbed but when excitation increases the required reactive power will be decreases so the reactive power absorption is decreases absorption is decreases okay next what about active power that active power is constant active power is constant because he mentioned the mechanical input is constant that's why active power is also constant okay next next problem an alternate operating an infinity bus bar with fixed input if the excitation increases then e value and del value a simple phenomena so it will be an so an alternator operating an infinity bus bar fixed input if the excitation increases whatever the excitation increases means the no load emf increases we know that and e is always inversely proportional to load angle so from this the load angle will be decreases next next problem an alternator operating in infinity bus bar with fixed excitation at an angle of 30 degrees so we have the alternator that will be operated at the infinity bus bar infinity bus bar and excitation value is fixed e value is the constant e value is the constant okay yeah if the load angle if the load angle is del equal 30 degrees initial load angle is del 1 30 degrees. the load on the machine is doubled the load on the machine is doubled so we will take the delivered power for example p1 is the p in the second case load on the power will be doubled p2 equal to two times power will be increases then what is the load angle del 2 value what is the del 2 value so generally you know the formula ev by xs into sin del this is the formula so this is the constant vd also constant this is also constant so ev by x xs so this is the constant v is the constant this is the constant the finally the active power is proportional to the sin del now we can write the equation p1 by p2 equal to sin del 1 by sin del 2 del 1 by del 2 p1 is p and 2p sin del 1 equal to sin 30 sin del 2 we have to find out right so both p will be cancelled remaining is the 1 by 2 sin 30 is also 1 by 2 this is the sin del 2 now sin del 2 equal to 1 del 2 equal to 1 here from this we can write del 2 value is the 90 degrees del 2 value is the 90 then the answer is the d answer is the d so this is about the relation between the load angle and the power okay so these are the different different problems there is a chance of asking in the exams okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you